hey guys what's up so we continue our indexes and report series and in this we will talk about corruption perception index very very important especially for essay writing as well as writing a lot of answers in polity sections global innovation index very very crucial when you talk about science and technology innovation policy etc guinea coefficient extremely important in economics parlance whenever you talk about inequality or income distribution etc and finally we talk about leffer's curve again very very crucial in economy okay so this is the part 1.4 please watch all the parts 1.1 to 1.3 before we watch this it's extremely crucial you watch them otherwise it becomes difficult for you to understand them this is presented by me and this is the youtube channel an academy so if you want to know more you can read as much as you want i'm just trying to impart high quality accessible education if you have any query or any doubt you can ask on the video or on the youtube either on the youtube or on the facebook page this is the url what is corruption perception index see what do you mean by corruption corruption is use of public power for personal gain this is the definition of corruption what do you how do you perceive it it is not corruption measurement index why because real corruption is always hidden so it's impossible for you to measure it so it's how the people how the experts how the bodies how the groups how the institutions perceive it that's how you come about cpi okay so it is the basically ranking of nations and territories on the basis of how corrupt the public sector that is public officials the bureaucrats and other persons who are on high public positions and politicians are perceived okay so both the elected people people's representative as well as selected ones so it is a composite index what do you mean by a composite index that it is calculated based on a combination of data from a lot of reputable institutions i don't want you to list down the 10 12 institutions which is not necessary they specialize basically in governance issues as well as in the business climate analysis so how it, how good it is so these institutes 12 to 13 institute they send their report on the basis of which a composite index is created that is called as cpi okay now cpi reflects views again it is not absolute its views its perception of lots of observers including experts who live in the countries and the territories which are evaluated so always remember transparency international ti is the body which calculates cpi please remember this it is asked a lot of time it takes the data from those 12 13 institutions and then it calculate this composite index now just like hdi higher the number of cpi better it is it means it is less corrupt for example if you have 100 score which is not possible theoretically very clean rather very very few countries will ever reach to this like the best countries known today have 92 score so only in theory it can exist well zero is for highly corrupt okay again zero is also not possible corruption means misuse of power by a public authority for a private gain i have already told you and why why do we measure perception why can't we just measure the corruption because absolute corruption is hidden okay you can't measure it it's hidden that's why you measure perception and what's the cpi cpi has a correlation okay you understand what is correlation so as the cpi becomes worse regulations by government increases and when regulation increases black marketing also increase so it further makes cpi worse so it's a vicious cycle of corruption now moving forward oecd countries again i am telling organization of economic cooperation and development in general we have a very high score for example denmark is the first ranker have 92 score new zealand has 91 so these are oecd countries very very high score okay now india had 38 score in 2014 which means a rank of 85 out of 175 earlier we were doing better 81 something rank but now it is 85 now pakistan has rank of 126 bhutan has sub very high very good rank of 30 bangladesh has 145 and afghanistan have 172 one of the worst performing countries now african and arab countries undergoing civil war uprising subsurges approval upheaval all the ups are the worst performers okay the approach uprooting of governments etc now again please remember this this has been proven that one unit increase in cpi for example india has 38 score so if we improve our increase to let's say 40 or 41 then it can lead to increase in gdp also the percentage rate this is extremely important you should write this whenever we are talking about economic losses due to corruption okay so you can quote this data 
now what is criticism it can can't be it can't be measures right it can't be like real corruption measurement it is just perception please remember this is extremely important it cannot measure the real corruption it's focused on elite countries and it promote wrong public policies for example a public policies which is introduced says somehow that cpi is the target now so rather than dealing with the real corruption they come into this uh, war mode against cpi so they just want to increase their cpi rather than decreasing the corruption it's a difference okay just remember this now global innovation index gii it ranks the country obviously on the basis of the environment it provides for innovation this is the first thing second thing what is the output of these innovations is there any tangible output of these innovations so both these parameters the country is ranked on first the enabling environment second is the innovation outputs both are important it uses more than 80 indicators you don't need to remember them it to, it measures both the capabilities and output as i have already spoken switzerland uk sweden netherlands and usa are the top 5 you can just remember one or two of them name china is very high very high in brics 29th number south africa is again high brazil is high india is on the lower side out of 141 so whenever it even if it comes to brics nation you can see brazil uh, china south africa doing much better than india even in innovation potential terms now global innovation index is measured by two sub indexes one is called as innovation input sub index iisi one is innovation output sub index just remember these two terms nothing else is required they have five pillars under them they have two pillars under them okay now pillars are divided into sub pillars just in case if someone asks in prelims you should not look as if you have never heard of global innovation index each sub pillar is divided into individual indicators which are 81 sometimes 83 in total now sub pillar scores is the weighted average of individual indicators okay i am i'll tell you what are these pillars and sub pillars now pillar scores are weighted weighted means one of the one of them can be given more weight like in average calculation so for example if a is 5 and b is 5 then their mean need not be 5 if a is given more weight than b okay just remember this now four measures include uh, which which makes this gii first is innovation input sub index as i have already told you takes five pillars output takes two pillars into account overall global innovation index mean of input and output sub index very very simple and innovation efficiency ratio is output divided by input sub index just remember this this is a ratio while this is the average now these are the five pillars under innovation input so what input can you provide in innovation first of all you need to have institutions the practices the policies in place okay then you need to have human capital they have as necessary degrees and they have necessary infrastructure like uh, laboratories etc then market needs to be sensitive towards innovation and finally business should evolve around these innovations so market sophistication and business sophistication now let's move to output so in output as you all know we will deal with knowledge and technology outputs where also the creative outputs so these are the two outputs which we include in gii calculation
so let's draw a graph okay so this is how you draw a graph right so okay so this is the y axis okay here we have cumulative share of income earned by the people okay so just remember this is the total income earned this is we have zero and this is hundred percent so here must be 10 20 30 you got the point 90 percent of the total income earned and finally this here we have a share of people okay share of people the cumulative income earned from lowest to highest incomes again just remember this this is increasing in this direction this is increasing in this direction okay so this is here we have 100 percent just remember this so this line if i draw a line from here to here this is just imagine it's a straight line and this is at 45 degrees so now if i show you this is the 10 percent of the people and this is the 10 percent of the income so at this point 10 percent of the lowest people earn the 10 percent of the income again if you go by here so 20 percent of the people will earn 20 percent of the income 50 percent of the bottom people earn 50 percent of the income is that understood so we go on and on and on something like that so this was this is called as line of equality it means here the Gini coefficient is zero now let me draw a typical curve for a particular country okay so let's assume this is a curve for a particular country sorry for the bad drawing uh, yeah something like this so this was a typical curve for a country so now this particular area which comes between the Lorenz curve and the line of equality so now this red curve is the Lorenz curve so this area let's assume this is as I've already spoken a now this area between line of equality and this entire area this x axis is b so this area between line of equality and the x axis is b okay so the Gini coefficient is a divided by a plus b now I think it is easier for you to understand so just remember this diagram it is extremely important it will help you a lot this is how you calculate Gini coefficient now let me draw uh, one more in this and let's assume now this is the Lorentz curve okay so in this particular case let, so the value of a will increase in the blue curve and since the value of a increases the Gini coefficient automatically increases is that understood so if this curve if Lorentz curve let's assume it is exactly the same as line of equality then the Gini coefficient is zero which means we have perfect equality okay and let's assume the Lorentz curve is following the x-axis okay let's assume this is the Lorentz curve okay and it is following the x-axis then it means Gini coefficient is 1 so it means we have the because a is equals to b in that particular case so when it follows the x-axis completely it means that all the person combined together is earning 0% of income share only one person is earning everything so it means Gini coefficient is 1 so I hope you understand now so again in short so if this is the curve and this is the line of equality okay so in this particular case uh, this has the country has let's say 0.2 guinea then this particular country has 0.4 guinea then this particular country has 0.6 guinea okay is that understood as the value of a keeps on increasing the value of guinea also increase and if it is perfectly parallel then it means g is equals to 1 so what are the implications of guinea high guinea means high inequality as i have already spoken guinea more than 50 is considered high inequality it is seen in case of southern africa especially in south africa it is one of the highest inequal nation of planet earth namibia botswana etc then latin and central america are also highly unequal honduras colombia belize brazil is highly unequal country it has guinea ranging in 0.6 okay then Asia also is very poor performer especially the southern Asia now India's guinea is around 35 okay so it has it is considered very good score of 0.35 okay now OECD countries have one of the lowest guinea in entire earth it ranges from 0.2 to 0.4 now limitation of guinea is that it does not take into account population structure for example if you have very less working age group and you have lot of old age group so it means that guinea is in this case will be 
high because very few people are earning all the income but it does not mean the country is unequal so if the number of aged working population children etc all should be taken into account but it does not take into account and it is not the indicator of well being all the time for example afghanistan is one of the lowest guinea of 27.8 does not mean it is one of the most awesome performing nations now lastly let's talk about leffer curve Leffer curve basically demonstrates the relationship between tax rates and tax revenue which is collected by the officials now as the taxes increase from the origin of the curve that is from very low value tax revenue collected will also increase to a certain extent okay now this collection will peak at a certain point let's call it t star okay now let's assume tax rate is increased to 100% okay extreme right of the curve now everything you earn will go to the government coffers okay now will you work no obviously the answer is no that is why we do not increase the tax rate to 100% so it means that if tax rates keep on increasing people tend not to work hard rather some may stop working altogether because people will not be incentivized enough and thereby it will reduce tax revenue so it asks to keep the tax rate anywhere between 20 to 50% not beyond that that is followed by the uh, entire world so how do you draw this leffer curve so this is how you draw this leffer curve okay so this is here you have the government's revenue okay and here you have the tax rate in percentage is that understood so this is the curve this is to start from zero okay it should start from zero otherwise it will look like gaussian curve never touches any of these axes just remember this that is why it is not a gaussian curve this is 100 this is zero this is the point where it peaks around somewhere okay so this is the t star so as you can see after t star the uh, this keeps on falling and government will get less of the revenue people will also not work that is why the 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 rate should be somewhere between here in this particular zone that is 20 to 50 percent so that is all about this video if you like this video do let me know and spread the word and be a part of this education revolution thank you for watching the tutorial have an awesome day